I'm Diane Davis. I'm Andy Davis. Uh, we're the owners of Scottville Christmas Tree Farm here just south of Oskaloosa, Iowa. Uh, we uh, actually started the farm back in uh, the 1980s. We bought the property in 1985, it was 18 acres, and uh, it was all pasture. And we wanted, I, it wasn't necessarily Diane's vision, but mine love trees. And so what grows quick, but from what I understood at that point in time, it was evergreens. So we started planting trees, um, not with the intention of selling them for Christmas trees, just to get a bunch of trees in the ground. And then as they started to grow, you know, how things kind of evolve, I thought maybe we can sell them for Christmas trees. And um, on how to uh, grow Christmas, cheer them, and there's a little bit more that goes into it than just sticking them in the ground. And that's kind of how we got started. I started sharing them. The intention was to, if we could ever sell any, is to help it pay for the, our, chi our boys' college education. And, um, and, and they've been out of the house and graduated for almost 10 years now. <laughs> we decided that um, we'd continue it once they, they graduated because uh, I needed something to keep me busy. It just seemed like a pretty good purpose to get up, for, get up uh, in the morning for. 1997, um, we advertised in the local newspaper, and I think we sold, and we, we always opened the day after Thanksgiving, and we historically had been open up until Christmas, and I think we sold like just about 50 trees at that point in time, so which we were pleased. Um, now we, the last couple of years, we sold that in the first few hours of opening day. It's changed a lot. Um, in fact, unfortunately, because we are a small farm, uh, we have to limit the number of trees we sell just so we can have trees for the next year. A variety. Yeah, this is a scotch pine right at the edge of the yard. You know, the first trees we planted back in the 1980s, it was right around 1986, 87. Um, we planted 500 of them by hand. I took a week's vacation. Um, Dug a hole, put the dirt back, watered them all. It took a week to plant 500 trees, and all of them but 12 died. We had a drought, similar to what we've been running into this the past few years. Um, we waited two years, planted again. I used a tree planter, pulled behind a tractor, planted 500 trees in the same area, um, and it took three hours. And most of them survived because we got the rain that we needed. Like this tree here, you can't see it from where we're at, is one of those second year trees. So it's uh, 30 to 40 years old. Uh, so um, this is a scotch. This one on the end is a fir, which we have difficulty growing. Uh, and deer really like them. They rub the heck out of them. You know, and they also bite off the tops. It's a scotch. We basically have scotch pine. Sorry, this is a fir. Some firs that have survived, I'm trying to work on more firs because there are a, there's a bigger demand for firs. Uh, and we have white pine. Those are the three main ones that we have out here uh, based on our soil type and what we find grow, which Scott pine, scotch pine and white pine are the two main ones that, that, that grow. We're pretty successful with. All the seasons, yeah. Well, wintertime can be pretty quiet because it's cold out, but there is some trimming that can be done in the winter time. Um, a lot of these trees, you know, I'll trim out some of these top branches uh, because they didn't sell the prior year. So it just helps thin the tree out a little bit. It doesn't have to be done, but I'll do that to get me outside in the winter time. Springtime, it gets kind of busy because then we're prepping, prepping for tree planting. Um, pardon? In April. Yeah, that starts in April. Um, and this year we planted just shy of 1,400 trees. Um, and the challenge is getting those first, get them by the first year. There's been a couple of years in which, well, the last few years, we've had less than a 20, 25% survival rate. So you do a lot of planting and uh, we're just trying to do more things to get them to survive. Um, like watering is one of the things. Next season. The next season is we is actually starting about now, and that is shearing, where we actually 
you know, will shape the tree. A lot of people, it's, it is hard to believe, they think we plant them one year and the next year we harvest them. Well, it's about a seven or eight year process in which you plant them. And then when they get to about, be about three or three years old, you start shaping them, actually shear them. Every year after that, you shear, you, you make it more of a, a Christmas tree shape that people expect. It also makes the tree a little bit thicker. Um, and um, about seven, eight years, typically they get about six feet high, which is about pretty close to marketing size. Most people want, they're looking for bigger trees this time uh, anymore. I mean, they're looking for 10, 12, 14 foot trees, which I'm happy when the big ones go, because when it comes to shearing, that is a real challenge when you're trying to shear something that big. So I prefer maybe if we don't have them, people buy a smaller tree. Well, this tree, you can actually tell because it's a scotch pine. And this here was last year's growth. This is this year's growth, and this has not been sheared yet. So if I take, this is one, year one last year. This would be year two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's eight or nine years old. And that's before it was, that was after it was planted. We try to buy um, trees that, you know, what they call 2-2. Two -two. That means they're two years in a nursery in two years out in the field before we plant them. So, you know, they're typically almost four years old, but before we plant them. So you start looking at that, this one's pushing 15 years old from when it was first, uh, first started growing. Well, um, that's a lot of cleaning up to do. We've had people say we have a very nice place because they can walk around, they're not fighting weeds. You know, we mow and we trim around the trees. So, you know, unless it's uh, the branches are real close to the ground, they can get down and, and cut, the, uh, cut the tree down without uh, actually um, fighting too many weeds. Um, but, you know, we trim everything up. And, of course, we have to get our equipment out for shaking and baling. And, uh, the saw is ready. Make sure that uh, most of them have sharp blades. Sometimes we you know, don't get all of those and people have a challenge cutting the tree down. But, um, you know, that's more of the preparation when it comes to, to selling. Uh, we don't have to go out and mark them price wise because on our farm we just have any price or the same price for any tree. Some farmers will mark charge per the foot, and ours is just easier. We just, that way people are looking for the tree they like rather than the price they think they can. Yeah, that started when the kids were growing up because they were very involved in the whole process, you know, from planting to selling. And um, if they were taking money, uh, it's a lot easier just to say, okay, it's whatever that price is this much, no matter what size tree it is. And that includes tax. And then I back into the tax when it comes to, to uh, filing the sales tax. Um, it just made it a lot simpler. We've stayed with that process because, yeah, a lot of farmers are dealing with a lot of change. And it gets a little challenging at times to because we are a small organization to handle. Uh, all the customers and uh, the receipts and shaking and bailing and loading and everything else that takes place during the selling process. And the dead branches that come with it, we don't. They rubbed on it. I have tried spraying, you know, different repellents. Um, we've had trees in the yard, uh, um, some spruces in the yard. And we have all these other trees, but they come into the yard and they rub them. So I put a I put fence um, T posts with wire around to keep them from getting to it, but I can't do that with all these trees. And they really like firs. Um, and this one was just did it did last year. It's right at the edge of, edge of my yard. So um, all we can do is, you know, we we've taken the attitude that you know we've got to be one with nature. Our and yeah, uh, you know, we. Uh, we try to save those trees we can, and those that the deer have, we just kind of grumble and go on. But we can also use the greenery. If one's been damaged too bad, we can snip the greenery off to make wreaths with it. So it's maybe not a complete loss. Yeah. So, so yeah, this was actually getting to be a you know, nice sized tree. And now, hopefully, I don't cut them down because they'll continue to grow. Sometimes they heal and if they continue to grow, someone might want the top of it. Or someone says, hey, that's unique. 
because a deer rubbed on it and they'll still buy it. That so, but if we went down there, which we don't have to, you'll find a bunch of smaller trees that are just broke off. And that makes it a lot more challenging. The Iowa Christmas tree growers, um, that is an organization that has a lot, well, most of the state are members and it's a great um, resource for people just getting started. Uh, they, they encourage it and want more yeah. farmers to get involved and they're yes. really willing to help and give a lot of advice and suggestions. Yes, they, it's a great group of people that uh, uh, they enjoy trees, they enjoy being outside and they um, are more than happy to help share their what they've learned. And so they're a great resource. Like artificial trees, more honestly. We have um, a few years really trying to win the market back, I guess you could say. But now, thankfully, more and more people like live trees. But yeah. there aren't that many farms. So yeah, <laughs> actually, a challenge. Yeah, we, when we first started selling trees, there were three other farms not too far from here that were selling Christmas trees. And it wasn't too long they they closed down. Um, and we're the only, actually, since we've started, um, there's been a couple in a tunnel closed down. We're the only tree farm uh, uh, in, the, in, in this county or surrounding counties that are actually selling trees yet. There are two new growers in Mahaska County up toward New Sharon, um, but they are not selling trees yet, which is a positive. You'd think I would be afraid of the competition. No, we actually want to promote the inter industry. And uh, it's good to see that there's some other generations getting involved. Okay. Well, this is uh, what we use for planting. It's an auger. Um, this is how we started the tree spud. We still use it to some degree, basically just dig a hole, put the tree in, and then you seal it behind it, and then go on to the next one. Uh, a few years ago, I did a, uh, a test to see if there's a better survival rate using one or the other. And it did show that using an auger, which makes sense, it loosens up the dirt a little bit more, um, actually increased the survival rate. Still comes back to how much they get water. <laughs> spraying equipment I use that for you know uh, spraying trees for there's funguses you have to uh, there's there's some pests uh, when it comes to you know some bugs that you have to battle from time to time it, but yeah it's you just have to be keeping a lookout if you like being around trees you're walking around and you're looking for signs of pests the, the one big press pest that we can't spray is deer <laughs> and rabbits because rabbits will nip off the new seedlings and then they're dead. Um, once we're planted, then it's mainly mowing. I did some mowing this morning because we're ready to start mowing. I'm going to start shearing this week. So I, want, I, I don't like walking through all the grass so much. It's easier getting to the trees when I'm shearing. So I'm going to be mowing today. That's our water wagon. I use that for watering um, when Mother Nature isn't necessarily cooperating because those, and I just water the new seedlings that we planted this year. But that takes a lot of time because what we do is I've got two pumps on here and I set, this is a two gallon bucket with two little holes in the bottom so that I can put this by the seedling, fill it with water and then it seeps in and it's more apt to go, the water staying where I need it. Hopefully to carry it through until it, it rains again because it does not take the place of rain. You I figure if I plant a uh, thousand trees, you know, two, you know, that's 500 gallons of water. 
Actually, it's more than that. It's double. <laughs> 2,000 if I give them two gallons a, a piece. So it takes time, and we prefer the Mother Nature rain. Um, so watering, and then, of course, the shearing, which uh, I use. Well, there's a lot of tree growers that use this for shearing the trees. They just whack off the new growth to get the shape. I find that's very hard on arms and it can be hard on the legs if you're not careful. Um, so I've always been looking for an easier way and really there isn't an easy way when it comes to shearing. But this is the main tool I use. It's like a rotary trimmer and you just go up and down around the tree to shape it. And um, then you use a pair of nippers to do some trimming on the top of the tree. After we shear them, then it's just basically mowing through the course of the summer uh, until it, it gets to uh, Christmas tree time. And that's when we get the property ready. Everything's cleaned up, ready for our customers to come. And they come out. When they come out, we greet them. And we, we uh, a lot of farms that will not give their customers a saw for liability reasons. But if they don't want to saw it, cut it down, we'll more, more than happy to help them and haul it down. But that's part of the fun of getting your own tree. They go out, they make the decision as far as what tree they like, and they cut it down, they, they haul. Once they bring it down to the building, we'll shake it for them. Some people think that the dead needles mean it's dying, but no, it's all no, new growth. Pine trees do the same thing that regular deciduous trees do. They lose their needles, but they use the pro, lose the prior, well, it depends on the tree, but the prior year's growth versus the, and then you have the new growth that's on there. But, you know, we shake the dead needles out to hopefully keep as much of it possible out of the house. And then if they want, we'll bale it, which is all it does is net it, make it in a smaller package so it's easier to get in the house and into the, the tree stand. The well, when we first started, we didn't have a shaker. So I had two boys, <laughs> one on each side, and Sorry. we would <laughs> each end of the tree and we'd shake, the, try to shake the needles out. And, uh, Anyway, that was comical. Yeah. And the, baler, the baler we got, mm -hmm. but we didn't have the cement, and we had it fastened to a pallet. And <laughs> in order to get the tree through, you had to have a bunch of weight on the pallet. So somebody would stand on the front on the pallet to try to hold it down. <laughs> they pull so, it through. So now we fasten to the cement, and we actually, if yeah. it's a big tree, we use a winch to pull it through. So this is just you pull that out, hook it to the tree and pull it to the baler. So it can pull through a lot bigger trees than we would ever be able to do just uh, by ourselves, just doing it by hand. Yeah. Well, yeah, uh, from using a shovel and crumbling it in to using, now I use an auger, which still it's time consuming, but that uh, the auger, um, digs the hole and you stick the tree down there, it helps separate the roots and gives them a little bit more to, to uh, uh, looser soil from the grow the roots to grow in. A new grower could rent the planter that goes behind the tractor if you just have an open space and you're just planting tree after tree. Since we're having to spot fill, that's why we have yeah. to go. We can't one use one time. of those planters, which we, everything we that we've that. planted you know, after that second year, the second year is when we actually used the planter for the first time. We got it from the Conservation Commission. We rented it. But uh, the first planting of everything was used with the tree planter. And then as we filled in, we had to start doing it a little bit more manually. Um, and, and that's, I'm not sure how you get away from that. Uh, it's just uh, one of the things you have to enjoy if you're going to be a tree farmer. <laughs> well, that's 
that trailer basically I use for everything, whether it be cutting brush and hauling away. Most people recognize this trailer I use to help haul trees back to the buildings. Um, I can't have a very big trailer because of the spacing between the rows. A uh, bigger trailer just won't fit or it'll, you know, damage the, the uh, trees as I'm going down there. So, you know, I've had that thing so many years. It's amazing. The rubber made made a very good product <laughs> and it has taken a lot of abuse. But a lot of the families like to cut their tree down and then drag it back. You know, they'll have two or three kids, you know, having a branch hauling it back to the house or up here to the shaker. But if it's too big or someone needs help, we're more than happy to go out with the, with the wagon. Yeah, that's that's part of the experience. That's the fun, the choose and cut. So um, it's all here. We don't have enough trees to supply anybody in town. We've actually been approached by a grocery store uh, because they could not get trees. The last, especially the last couple of years, there had a big demand and uh, trees have been in limited supply. A lot of that comes from um, a drought we had back in around 2012, 2013. And there's a lot of uh, trees that died and it kind of cut into the supply at that point in time. And also the demand for trees have, has grown. Um, so no, in fact, we used to, when we ran a little short in pre-cut trees and our customers don't want pre-cut trees. They want to cut their own. So a lot of farmers do both, but we, it was too expensive. I had to eat free. <laughs> so we don't do that. But the expense went out and I didn't get any return. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.